Welcome back to part 3 of uh, me showing off my Vertigo Swirl Records collection. Uh, I would like to continue. I believe this will be the last part. I would like to continue with a wonderful uh, progressive rock act from England who released only one record on the Vertigo label. Uh, they also released a second album on the Philips label, which was uh, the main label. Um, many of the main labels at that time, such as EMI, Philips and others, uh, made smaller alternative labels. Uh, Decca had, for example, uh, Derham and uh, Decca and Nova series and EMI had the famous Harvest label and the Philips they had uh, I think both the Fontana label and of course the Vertigo label and uh, in 1969 to 73 it was this famous Swirl label and the band I would like to show now I said was a British uh, progressive act was called Gracious uh, and this is their wonderful debut album. Uh, it's just called that. I think it's uh, is it called an exclamation mark in uh, English. And the cover art is very untypical for the Vertigo uh, label. On the inside, however, <laughs> it looks like this. And I think the band it intended this to be the outside of the cover, but uh, somehow. The label uh, went for this side as the outside. Uh, often you will find these, uh, if you can find one, you will find these a uh, little off-white and stained. That's because the cover is textured and uh, matte with no lamination. Mine is uh, in okay nick, but uh, it could have been better. But I have yet to find clean example of this one a clean copy but this will do for now it's a wonderful piece of uh, progressive uh, British music and uh, you can find I think you can find a film clip from Isle of Wight festival in 1970 actually uh, there you go the vertigo label uh, sometime early in 1970 they dropped the Philips Records product uh, line on the bottom there. I think there were only seven or eight releases from 69 through the first half of 1970 which had that line. That's why you find many second pressings without the Philips credit. Well, the next band I would like to show is another wonderful progressive psychedelic band from England. And that's Gravy Train. Unfortunately, I have only got their first album on the Swirl label. I have their second one on the Nakama repressing Ballad of a Thin Man. And the original has become very expensive last years. Uh, Gravy Train's first album was called Simply That and it's a wonderful uh, mixture of uh, many bands. I, I find them, I associate them with Jethro Tull perhaps because uh, of some of the flute which is on here but heavy guitar as well. Uh, a nice melancholic uh, piece of work, wonderful stuff. Uh, and of course Gravy Train released two more albums after the two records on the Vertigo label. One was called Staircase to Heaven which is on Dawn and I can't remember the last one. But uh, I really recommend you go and check out Gravy Train's stuff and uh, start with this one even though uh, most people say that Ballad of a Ballad of a Poor Man 
is uh, better. Next band is uh, Standard Blues Rock, Juicy Lucy, with their <laughs> debut album just called Juicy Lucy. Perhaps a little bit tasteless this cover art. Uh, it was censored in a number of countries, but not the UK version. Uh, well, it's standard blues rock, what can you say? Um, not my favorite, but this first album is raw and uh, I like it. Um, but nothing uh, invention, nothing uh, adventurous about it. Their next album was called uh, Lie Back and Enjoy It and it's this is also a six panel fold out poster cover with pictures uh, of each band member and uh, actually I think this is a bit boring and I'm uh, contemplating trading or selling it but for those who like standard blues rock with a bit of slide guitar Juice Lucy might be exceptional. I know they are loved by many, but not by me. The next band, however, I really love. It's Keith Tippett Group. It's wonderful jazz pianist Keith Tippett, known for collab his collaborations with King Crimson on uh, their second album, In the Wake of Poseidon. Uh, but this album is wonderful. It's uh, avant-garde free jazz and it's just a wonderful production, uh, wonderful uh, melodies. And this is a German copy actually, which I came across. And another way to see that it's a German label is to see it says Vertigo on the top of the label there, over side A. And this is typical for the German vertigos. The English one doesn't have that, that just has side A. And of course the B side. And it says GEMA, which is, uh, I don't uh, remember exactly what it is, but GEMA uh, is standard for all German labels. <coughs> I think it's uh, something about uh, copyright control or something. We also have that here in Norway. Every country has it. In Norway or Scandinavia it's called NCB, Nordic Copyright Control. Uh, Nordic Copyright Bureau, sorry. And in GEMA it's the same, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what GEMA stands for. Something with Germany. I guess. Over to a little piece of folk music, my folk section here. First off with Magna Carta and the second album Seasons. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a good uh, album. But I like their next album uh, uh, even better. I can't remember the title right now, something with the uh, orchard, uh, waste this orchard, something. But this is the second pressing because this album was released in 1970, but here you can see the Vertigo logo above the spindle hole. Uh, and that tells, should tell you that this press is from 1971. So it's a repressing, the second press. The first press had the Vertigo below the spindle. Oh. You might find that I repeat myself, but uh, it's better to overlearn something, don't you think? Anyway, it's in the middle of the night. I should be sleeping instead of making videos about records, but you do strange things at strange times. Uh, when you have vacation. The next folk rock uh, album I would like to show you is uh, by Ian Matthews. 
if I saw if you saw through my eyes is uh, I think it's his first solo album and uh, I don't know how to show this Ian Matthews was the first uh, vocalist in Fairport Convention and he has made several solo albums uh, since he quit the Fairport Convention in 1970 I think this one is from uh, 1970 or 71 but it's a wonderful uh, wonderful piece of folk music this is uh, a US pressing and as you can see quite quite thin uh, it might be Dynaflex but uh, there's nothing here which says so as there were on RCA Victor records but uh, here you can see the American label and a way to spot that it's an American edition is to watch for the catalog number all the American Vertigo records have VEL in their catalog number the VEL 1002 VEL means that it's a US pressing and the US pressings are for some reason quite cheap to get. I think you can find Ian Matthews record, this record for, well I guess, 12 to 15 dollars. And its UK counterpart is quite expensive. I don't know why that is. If it's if it has something to do with the pressing or why the UK ones are the most expensive ones. That's just the way it is. But uh, the US pressing sounds very good. Very good. I recommend you get that. Next up is a Canadian English power blues trio with psychedelic moments. Mayblitz. And now we're back to the Vertigo uh, covers again. Fantastic cover art. <laughs> Fantastic. Another way to spot that it's a German release. Is it, you see the shine on the cover? It's because it's laminated. All the German covers were laminated. Uh, which the UK ones were not. That's why it's easy to, much easier to find a clean German copy than it is with an English copy. And here you see it again, ST33, Vertigo over side A, German. This is a wonderful album and I really recommend you check, check out uh, Mayblitz, Raw Psychedelic Progressive Blues Rock. Wonderful. Uh, their second album, 2nd of May, uh, it's good I think, but uh, not as good as their first, even though many may disagree with me on that one. <coughs> another wonderful band, another US pressing on the Vertigo Swirl label, Pato. And this, uh, their, their rec all their records were wonderful blues jazz rock with the wonderful Oli Holsall on guitar and piano and vibraphone a magnificent multi-instrumentalist and and John Halsey on drums and Clive Griffiths on bass and Mike Pato on vocals strong strong musicianship and just wonderful songs and direct to the point and just Yes, super magnificent. But I guess you already know about Pato, so uh, you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, go and check him out right now. Their next album, Hold Your Fire, was also released on Vertigo Swirl with a fold out uh, three panel cover. Uh, very very expensive these days. Uh, I have got that on uh, Akama repressing. 
that'll do for now. Uh, next band is uh, more in the heavy rock uh, vein. Uh, sounds a little bit uh, like uh, you, uh, early Uriah Heap maybe, still life. Uh, wonderful band, but no uh, no songs stand out as uh, immediate uh, hits. Sadly, a big tear on the back cover there, but that's uh, why I could afford the album because it's very expensive these days. But uh, most of the cover is in very nice shape, and the records in uh, nice shape. Uh, wonderful heavy rock stuff. This. Uh, kind of Uriah Heap-ish, uh, but with no, well, you have to listen to it sometimes and it grows upon you, but wonderful stuff there, still life, some heavy rock as well, and um, let me see here, well, I forgot. Uh, I've forgotten all about Manfred Mann. Manfred Mann started a band he called Chapter Three, and uh, they released uh, Chapter Three in 1969, and this Volume Two in 1970. And I prefer the first album, Volume One, but I have managed to get this one, which I don't like as much as the other. But it's okay. Um, I don't know what. What I should call the music, Manfred Mannish rock with uh, a little bit of uh, Latino rhythms, but the cover itself is <laughs> creepy, <laughs> creepy and wonderful. Another Keith cover, and uh, what I'm listening to right now is uh, Warhorse. The band uh, which Nick Simper from uh, Deep Purple Mark I started after being sacked from Deep Purple. He went on to form uh, Warhorse and they released two albums, I think. And he continues the path of uh, Deep Purple Mark I actually. Perhaps a little bit heavier than uh, Deep Purple Mark I, but in the same vein as his previous band. Very, very nice records. Both uh, this one and the Red Sea, I think uh, their second album was called, which I unfortunately haven't got yet. But uh, I recommend you check out uh, Warhorse. I got two more records from my Vertigo Swirl Records collection. <coughs> Sorry. And I uh, Realized I had forgot one record in my part one, which I uh, pulled out and uh, It's a really important part of my Vertigo Swirl collection, so I I uh, don't know why I forgot it, but uh, there you go It's uh, Affinity a British uh, quintet consisting of uh, amongst Linda Hoyle on vocals who also released a solo album on the label, but look at that cover, wonderful. Uh, some say it's from the same location as the Black Sabbath cover, but I don't know. Uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, jazz rock, uh, solid musicianship and uh, a nice record all the way through. A very good cover of uh, Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower here. And uh, some standout tracks such as uh, Three Sisters. Uh, wonderful, wonderful record. This is a French edition, uh, which you can tell by uh, the small vertigo balls on each side and it has a laminated cover which uh, has helped it to stay in uh, very nice near mint condition since 1969-1970 uh, 
the English counterpart goes goes for uh, yeah silly money. So this French edition will have to do for now. But uh, a very very strong album, jazz rock, uh, fantastic. And I love Linda Hoyle's vocals. Her voice is very. Uh, yes, unlike uh, anything else, I think. The last record for this video is Vertigo Annual, a compilation album uh, released in 1970, a double record set with uh, a lot of uh, the most famous artists on the label. Coliseum, Rod Stewart, Jimmy Campbell, May Bliss, Juicy Lucy, Fairfield Parlor, Magna Carta, Affinity, Black Sabbath, of course, Gracious, Cressida, Nucleus, Manfred Mann, Bob Downs, Dr. Strangely Strange, and Uriah Heep. A very good compilation album. So, if you want to get into Vertigo and the Swirl era, if you haven't started yet, this would be a good starting point. And this uh, compilation is for some reason quite affordable and a very good uh, starting point. Well, that's all the records uh, in my Vertigo Swirl collection. Uh, I'm not setting out to complete and uh, buy all the releases on the label. Uh, but I would like to have a few more which I know that I really like. I'm just collecting the records I, I like and listen to. If, if there's a re record I don't like, I sell it or trade it for something else. But I'm uh, getting near where I want to be with the Vertigo records. Still a few that I want, as I said. Well. That's about everything for now. So if you enjoyed watching my videos, uh, if you learned something uh, or if you found it boring or tedious, uh, please give me a comment, uh, both positive or negative, uh, and please constructive. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so if you wish. Uh, thanks for now.